Hi guys and welcome to video 30 in the But How Do It Know companion video series. Today we're going to be looking at the assembly language for our CPU and also we'll learn how to use the automatic clock. So in the past few videos we've basically completed our build here. We've added the flags register, we've added the missing conditional jump circuitry, we've learned about the I.O. instructions and the I.O. Uh, devices that are built inside one of the Arduinos and now we have everything we need to start programming this thing. And instead of programming uh, manually like we did in one of the previous videos, we're going to use the Arduino's memory to write and store our programs. To achieve this, I've created a set of C macros that can act as an assembly language for our computer. Let's take a look at that. So if you open up the Arduino main sketch in the Arduino IDE and you go to the ASM.h tab, this is where you will find the definitions for the assembly language. Let's go through them quickly. The first four defines that you see here represent the ALU flags. They are used internally inside the other defines and you won't need to use them directly. Right below that, there is a type def reg and that declares constants for our four registers R0, R1, R2 and R3. So when the instructions require uh, mentioning these registers, you use these definitions to specify the proper values. Below that, we have our eight ALU instructions. So add, shift right, shift left, not, and, or, exclusive or, and CMP. You can see to the right how they are constructed using the binary code for the instruction and oring that with the proper register values. And at the bottom, you have our three data manipulation instructions. Load, which is used to load a register B from the RAM address in RA, store, which is used to store register B to RAM address in RA, and finally the data instruction, which is used to store a byte of data in RB. Moving along, we have the jump R and jump instructions, followed by the conditional jump family, which contains one instruction for each possible combination of ALU flags. Then there is the clear flags instruction, that we should use before any ALU instruction to make sure that the flags are cleared. Then there is the halt instruction. We haven't talked about this one too much because it's something that I added to John's design. So the halt instruction basically says to the clock to stop ticking and halt the machine. It's very useful when your program has reached the end and you want to stop the computer. And finally, we have our four IO instructions in D, in A, out D, and out A. So let's take a look at a sample program and see what it looks like. So if you navigate to the programs.h tab in the Arduino main sketch, there are a series of sample programs that I've placed there. Let's take a look at the first one, which is named Prog42. It's basically the same example that we've been using since the beginning, a simple program to add the values 20 to 22. Let's look at the instructions. So we start with two data instructions to store 20 to R0 and 22 to R1. Then we issue a clear flags instruction to make sure that the flags register is empty before we do our addition. Then we add R0 to R1 and store the result in R1. Now we want to send the result to one of the I.O. devices to be able to see it. We will use I.O. device number 1 because it is meant for displaying numbers. So we store the value 1 in R0 and we issue the out A instruction to select the IO device number 1. We then do an out D instruction, sending the value that is in R1, the answer to our addition. And finally, we stop the computer because we have finished what we have to do. Now let's see how to use this program in our computer and also how to have it run by itself by using the automatic clock. To run a program, navigate to the main tab of the Arduino main sketch and locate the define named program. There, replace the null value with your program name. If you want the clock to run automatically, 
you need to specify a value different than zero for the Hertz parameter. Here are some sample values. If you want the computer to run at one step per second, use four. At one instruction per second, use 24. Or at maximum speed, you can use 64. This computer is fairly slow, but it has nothing to do with the components that we use or with John's design. It is the communication mechanism between the different Arduinos that is very slow. In this case, let's use 8. Then, connect your CPU using the USB cable, turn on the serial monitor, and upload your sketch to your CPU and watch it run. Awesome! As you can see, the program ran properly and printed the correct answer, 42, on the Arduino serial monitor. To write your own programs, navigate to the myprogs.h tab in the Arduino main sketch. There you will find the program template. Simply cut and paste it, change the program name, and add your instructions. When you are done, use the HALT instruction to stop the computer. Then, go to the main tab, place your program name in the program parameter, and upload the code to your CPU like before. So that's it for this portion on programming the computer. In the next video, we'll look at some sample programs. See you soon!